And now uh, we're to the final portion of the state of Rittner. Uh, we started the Best Kids in America Scholarship uh, Program uh, back in 2016. Uh, it's one of the highlights of the year for me. Uh, looking forward to the presentations tonight. Um, so I will turn it over to Mr. Crowder and his team. So ladies and gentlemen, my name is Ken Crowder, and for almost 40 years, I taught American history at Ritter Middle School. It indeed was an honor, and the roughest thing I think I've ever done in my life was to turn in the keys and leave. Somebody did some figuring, and either directly or indirectly, I dealt with over 4,000 students. All of them were very special to me, when they would leave at the end of the year, I literally would cry, and they can't believe when I meet them out somewhere in today's world, I still remember where they used to sit. Literally, I do. All of them were special, but there's one young man that was extremely special that is the topic this evening, and here he is looking right at you with those big blue eyes. Now, Rodney Berry got in trouble every day. Not every other day, every day. He especially had trouble with lady teachers. He had problems at home, he had problems in the community. He had lots of problems and he started out the year very, very much the rogue. As the year ensued, you know, we started to notice a change in Rodney. And all of a sudden, the kid that was always in trouble began getting his act together. Now, Rodney would still get into trouble. He'd get sent to the office, and that didn't work. So I cut a deal with the team of teachers. I said, hey, tell you what, instead of sending Rodney to the office, send him down, I said, send him to me. I said, we get along pretty good. I kept Oreos in the desk and he'd come in and you know, sometimes spend a whole day with me. And I got to call him Rodney, the best kid in America. I would say to Rodney, you don't know it, buddy. You're the best kid in America. And he would say, yeah, right. To speed the story up a little bit, it got to be the end of the year. And the same teachers on the team with me that would send him to the office and complain about him in the teacher's lounge voted Rodney to be the most improved eighth grader on Team 8A of the 95-96 school year. I'd call that a turnaround, an amazing turnaround, okay? So it got to be the first week of June, Thursday of the week, and we have a big celebration in the Rittner Middle Gymnasium, all kinds of, all kinds of awards, athletic awards, all kinds of things. And the last thing on the program, on that Thursday evening, is I had the honor of calling Rodney to a podium similar to this. His family was there, and we had a, a white thing down the center of the gym, and he was dressed up fit to kill. And I remember saying to that group, ladies and gentlemen, as so voted by his teachers, the most improved student on Team 8A, for school year 1995-96, Rodney Scott Berry. The place exploded. He come running down that center aisle, right into my arms, and he's, remember now, he's, he's old boy, and he was crying, and I was crying, and we're hugging. That was Thursday. The next evening, Friday evening, while walking down Midland, near Lindbergh, 
if you can picture Denny's restaurant, a little strip mall, there's a Dollar General, and there's a sidewalk, Midland is coming in the direction, going to join up there at Lindbergh and Midland. Rodney and his buddy were walking down that sidewalk, and Rodney stopped to tie his shoe. But when you're tying your shoe, you're looking at the knot. A car comes up onto the sidewalk, hit Rodney, knocked him into the air, at least from here to that aisle out there, and really and truthfully from all intents and purposes, he was dead when he hit the ground. They took him out to St. John's Hospital. And at that time, you know, the end of the year, I had a brand new Chevrolet, we was going to go on a vacation. Didn't, at that moment in history, we didn't have cell phones. And the, I'm putting my suitcases in the trunk of that brand new Chevrolet. And this young lady right here, Jamie Butler, my student, is calling me on the phone. And Jamie with some other girls, Kathy Marisaki, Lisa Shicheski, and others. And they're on the phone, and I can't even comprehend or understand what they're saying. I heard crying, I heard sobbing, and Jamie tells me that Rodney had been hit, he's in the hospital, and it's not looking good. So later that night, Rodney's dad, Randy Berry, had to make the decision to unplug his son, and he passed away. So that's the story of Rodney today. For all good reasons, Rodney that you're looking at was the son that I never had. I love him to this day, and there was a time I couldn't have told this story quite as smoothly as this. I would never have gotten through it. So, in 2016, my former students put together a scholarship in Rodney's name and my name. And we have given, we've, since 2016, we've given away thousands of dollars, thousands of dollars. But our scholarship is different. The kids you're going to see introduced here momentarily, they probably don't have 4.0 GPA. They've had a rough walk in high school. There's been everything from family tragedy to personal problems to illness and high school has not been a bed of roses. And the way they win this scholarship is several months ago, I came and met them, and I said, I want you to send to me and to my committee, there's other members of the committee, board, we call, we call it a board, there's only four of us, two really. I said, I want you to write a paragraph telling us how you've turned it around, how you made lemonade out of a lemon and how you've got uh, your high school career on track and you're going to get your diploma. I said, it doesn't have to be lengthy. Paragraph two or three. So we've got the winners here this evening. But i got to tell you, because last year we didn't make it plain, this money is to be used to further their education. It doesn't have to be college. Doesn't have to be junior college. It can be rank and technical school. It can be beautician's college. It can be anything that for the United States Army, any armed force. That's what the money is intended for. And in order to get the money, you have to show the central office that you're enrolled somewhere, someplace, somehow in some way furthering your education. So the reason I'm telling that story is last year we had a young man, not gonna tell you his name, he left this assembly and the next day,
He was at the front desk at the central office. He said, I'm one of Crowder's kids. I'm here to get my money. <laughs> that didn't quite work like that. You have to produce evidence that you're doing something to further your education. So Jamie, Jamie was there with me in that class with Rodney. Jamie called me that night and she's with me here this evening. Jamie Butler, can we make her feel welcome? <laughs> the first recipient this evening for the amount of $1,500, okay? This young man, I kind of know personally. Uh, he's already been mentioned here this evening. And I remember being in the homecoming parade driving Dr. Kilbride in my convertible. And he's along the road there, you know, greeting people. He uh, served as a non-voting representative on the school board. And I said, Terrence, I've heard about you. I want you to come and address the Overland Business Association and meet the, I want you to meet the movers and shakers of our community. He said, what? I said, yeah, I want you to come. He said, I said, it'll be fine. He said, okay, we'll talk about this. But he did come. Can you imagine if you were a high school senior coming and addressing the mayor, uh, the, the city council, all the movers and shakers? He came in that morning dressed just like he is now and stole, stole the show away from me. It's not easy to do, Dwight. So anyway, the first recipient this evening Terrence E. Clark III for the amount of $1,500. Terrence, come up here and give us a recipient this evening for the amount of $1,500, Dylan Swan. Isabella Johnson O'Laughlin. Man and his family are out of town on 
family business that was urgent. They called Rittner, and Rittner called me uh, because he apparently knew this was going to happen, but they had to leave town unexpectedly. And he will most certainly still get the amount and his certificate for $1,000. Angel David Sosa Ferguson, can we clap for him? The next recipient again for a thousand dollars. I better mess it up, Chris. Samira, get my close. Samira. Span, is she here? Not. Okay. Put that on the table. We will go on to our last, and it's Brenda Cruz Caseco. That was quite an essay you turned in. Yes, ma'am. Yes, ma'am. Come on. certificates and this, this amount of money. The money is contributed by former students of mine. What an honor that is, and it gives me the goosebumps even to say it. Thank you for your time this evening.